Setting up Windows Subsystem for Linux has never been easier. Hi, I'm Sam, the engineering man, and today I'm gonna to show you all how to set up Windows Subsystem for Linux, including helpful tips and tricks and how to get an optimized environment going. That being said, let's go engineer some stuff. To get started, let's open Windows Terminal and a PowerShell. From here, we have several options to install WSL. If we do WSL dash dash install, this will do one of two things. It will install WSL, but it will also default to installing Ubuntu as the distribution of choice. Now, I know not everyone is gonna want to use Ubuntu, so I'm gonna show you another option that we can use so that we're able to pick which distribution we want. So instead for our install, what we're gonna do is we're gonna open a PowerShell window as an admin user and do WSL dash dash install dash dash no dash distribution. This will allow us to install just WSL without a specific distribution. As, as we can see from our output, it's gonna install the WSL toolset and the virtual machine platform. We will also want to make sure though that we first reboot our machine before any of the changes can take effect and then we can move on to the next step. Now, sometimes using PowerShell won't always work for enabling Windows Subsystem for Linux and it will get glitchy and the process won't work. So instead, what we're gonna need to do is come to the Windows Features setting, AKA turn Windows features on and off and manually enable things. So what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna come over and enable one of two things. First thing we're gonna wanna do is enable virtual machine platform right here. Make sure that's enabled. And then we're gonna wanna come down and enable Windows Subsystem for Linux. After we've done that, we're gonna hit the OK button and then it'll prompt us to reboot. I'm not gonna do this in this example because I've already done so. But once it reboots, we'll be ready to move on to the next step. If we come back over to our PowerShell window now and we do WSL dash dash list dash dash online, we can see a list of all the Linux distributions we can see. Everything from Alma Linux, Debian, Fedora, SUSE, Ubuntu, various other versions of Ubuntu, Arch, even Kali, and OpenSUSE. For the sake of this tutorial, we're gonna install Ubuntu. To install a Linux distro on WSL, we're gonna do WSL dash dash install dash D and then the name of our distro. In this case, it's gonna be Ubuntu. That being said, we can substitute that in with any of the other distros that we saw previously that we might want to install. Now, as we can see, it's gonna download Ubuntu, install Ubuntu, and now it's gonna launch Ubuntu. And this takes us into our first step here. We're gonna to need to create a default user. In this case, it's gonna use our Windows, which in my case would be SJR. I'm gonna set a password. I'm gonna confirm that password. And now we're gonna be brought right into our Ubuntu instance. And this drives us into our Windows user directory just running inside WSL, the same one that we could access through Windows File Explorer if we weren't running WSL. Now, if we close the terminal window and come back into it instead, you're probably wondering, how do we start WSL again? Well, we have a couple of options for this. First way is we can come back into terminal here in our PowerShell window and we do WSL tilde, wait a second, and boom, here we are in our home directory inside of WSL. Now, the second way that we can do things, if we exit out of here, if we come over, we'll see at the top of terminal, if we go over to the new tab, here on the drop down menu, we'll see a Ubuntu option. And now now if we click this, it will take us right into our home directory on WSL. So these are the two easiest ways that we can get back into WSL and make the most of it. Now, one of the really cool things about WSL is the integration into Windows File Explorer. So if we go over to our users in our Windows home name, again, in my case, SJR, I can see all my usual files within Windows Explorer. But the cool thing about this, if I were to create a text document for say, call it test.txt, and then the background off screen, I'm gonna quickly add some text, hello from Sam. Now, if we come back over to our terminal window, I just want to first point out a minor mistake because I accidentally literally put the file extension .txt onto the text file when that isn't necessary. But if we do an ls here, we can see all of our files here. And more importantly, there is test.txt. And now if we just cat test.txt, we can see hello from Sam. And this shows us we can access our Windows files within WSL2, no problem. The cool thing about WSL is we can also access our WSL created instance files 
inside the Windows File Explorer. So to do that, we're going to come into the terminal again, and we're going to change it to our home directory with a simple CD. And let's create a uh, file. Let's just call it nano hello wsl.txt. Let's do hello wsl. Save it. Close it. Cat it. Just to double check. Boom. Looks good. Back in File Explorer now, if we look on the left-hand side, we'll see we have a quick access shortcut for Linux. So let's click that. And as you can see, there's our Ubuntu directory right there. So if we drill down into this and go Ubuntu, and then we go to home, in my case again, SJR for my username. If we go to our text document, hello underscore WSL, and we double click it to open it, and there we go, hello WSL. So this is a great way to use Windows File Explorer to browse any of the files that you might've created in WSL so that you can share them and easily access them whenever you need. And that is how you install Windows Subsystem for Linux. If you're curious about how to install Docker on Windows Subsystem for Linux in five minutes or less, check out my video, which will be linked down below. As always, I'm Sam the Engineering Man. If you have any questions, comments, let me know down below. I'll read them and I'll answer them. Like and subscribe, and I'll catch you all next time.